Hello, my name is Christian Taylor. I'm coming to you from the Right to Dream Football Academy. Welcome to the Right to Dream Robotics Series. For this series, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the various modes to program and get your motors working the way you want them to. So first of all, you will need to install the LEGO Mindstorm EV3 program on your computer. We will leave a link in the description below so you can download it. It's really easy to install it on your computer. Once you've got your EV3, LEGO Mindstorm EV3 software installed, you now have to connect your intelligent brick to your computer. There are two ways you can do your connection. The simplest way and the easiest way is to use the USB cable that comes with the EV3 package. Normally, if you bought it brand new, you should have this USB cable within the pack. To use the USB, you connect the smallest part to this, and then the other part goes to the USB port on your computer. I'm now going to make my new program, or my first EV3 program. To do that, you click on the plus button here that says Add Project or you go to the file option, go to new projects and then choose program. Now, if you look down here, you find these tabs, the green tab, the orange tab, the yellow tab, the red tab, the blue tab, and the purple tab. Now, looking at the green tab, under that you find some options. Now, if you don't know what the options are, just send your cursor over and then the name would appear. So on this one, we find medium motor. And then on that one, large motor, move steering, move tank, and on and on and on. For the purpose of this episode, we are going to stay at the green tab, which is the action tab, and then look at how to move our large motor. Now to select any of these options, you just click and drag. So you click on this, and then you bring it up and connect it to this button. As soon as you connect it, you see it comes alive. If you bring it down, it goes gray. That means it's not connected. And if you run this program, it wouldn't work because it is not connected to the start. So let's send it back and have it connected. Good. Now, if you look at this block on the top right corner, you see a letter A in there. Now, if you click on it, you get option A, B, C, and D. So those are the ports that you would find on your intelligent brick where you connected the large motor. Now I am working with one large motor and it is connected to port A. So I make sure I select A here. Now if that is connected to port C, for example, then what you do is you click on this and change from A to C. Good. Now you come to this side and then you click on this you get these options. You get first off, on, on second, on degrees, and on rotations. So let's look at rotations. So let me select rotations, good. And then you have these options. Over here you have power, and then you have rotations. So let's look at power. Power is kind of like the speed. So these are motors. You think about it like a car. It can go from zero speed, that is not moving at all, to the maximum here is 100 speed. So that's how fast these motors can go. Or it can go in reverse. So in reverse will be negative speed. So for example, I can slide this down to negative one all the way to negative 100. So these motors, for example, the large motor is capable of going in one direction and the other direction. So it can go clockwise and counterclockwise. Normally, I tell my students, whenever you are testing something or you're trying something for the first time, use slow speeds. Right? But sometimes when you build a robot and you're trying it and you use very fast speeds, it can go really fast and quickly fall off a table. And that is not very good. So let's choose, you can either slide, use the slider and push it up to speed of 20 or you can click within here and type the speed yourself. So I can type 22 or 25 or 100. So let's do 25, good. And then now on this option, you have rotation. So let's 
do one rotation. So we select in here and then we put one. It's already one, that's by default. All right, now to run your program, you can either click on the run button here or you can click on the run button over here. They all do the same thing. Good, so that's one rotation at a speed of 25. Now let's keep it at one rotation and increase the speed. Let's go to speed of 50. Good, so you see it starts from this place and comes back to that place and that's a full circle. So that's one rotation. Let's do a speed of 100. Good. Now let's do the opposite. So let's get the motor to turn in reverse. Let's do one rotation in reverse at a speed of negative 50. Great. So let's look at degrees now. To use degrees, you click over here and then you move from on for rotations to on for degrees. As soon as you select that, you get these options. Now this pretty much looks like when we did it with rotations. So you have your port here, which is port C connected here. We don't need to change that. And then over here, we have the power. And then over here, we have degrees. So the power works the same as it does with rotations. You can put in the degree that you want to rotate this motor to. The default de degree you find there is 360 degrees, which I believe you know is the same as one rotation. So let's get the large motor to move for 360 degrees at a speed of 15. Good. All right, so let's do the opposite. Let's do negative 15, still with 360 degrees. Good. So let's look at on time. Now on time is very different from degrees and rotations, but it's also very simple. So all that it means is you set an amount of time, it will be measured here in seconds, and then you set the power, and then the robot keeps moving at that power until the time is up. Let's choose on for seconds. Let's do the power of 15, and then we do 10 seconds. So you can count down. Are you ready? Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and I bet my counting is off. <laughs> okay, so we've now looked at how to move your large motor using rotations, degrees, and time. Now you should try it yourself. If you have specific questions, you can ask them in the comment section or you can leave your email and I, can, I would reply you back. Or if you think I left something out, you can point it out to me in the comment section. We will cover uh, any questions you have in future episodes. Make sure to follow, subscribe, and see you in the next episode. Thank you very much.